All right, so today's video, we're going to look at proportional change and how it affects volume. So I'm going to start with a simple rectangular prism. This prism has a width of 2, a length of 3, and a height of just 1. Okay? So to this prism, I'm going to apply a scale factor of 2, which means all of my dimensions will get 2 times larger. So I'm going to take my width and I'm going to increase it or double it by 2. Okay? So it went from 2, now it's 4. I'm going to also increase my length. I'm going to double that. It goes from 3 now to 6, and I don't think I can leave that blank, so I'm going to go ahead and fill in another one there. Okay? Lastly, I'm going to increase my height. So my height is 1. I'm going to increase it, making it 2, but of course, I can't leave these blanks, so I'm going to go ahead and fill those in as well. Okay. So I can tell just by looking at this simple example that my volume did not just get two times larger. But if I break it apart, it looks like my volume actually got eight times larger. It's eight times larger than my original figure. So let's think about this. Volume is area of the base which in this case, a rectangular prism, is length times width. And then we multiply that by the height. When I just applied a scale factor of 2, my volume got 8 times larger. Okay. All right, so the length increased by a scale factor of 2. My width, I multiplied by 2. And my height, I multiplied by 2. Well, I know that 2 times 2 times 2 equals 8. So my volume actually increased by my scale factor to the third power. Think about it. Volume is a three-dimensional measurement. All three measurements increased or doubled. And so that's our scale factor to the third power with this three-dimensional measurement. So if I wanted to figure out a formula for proportional change to volume, I would say I take my original volume multiplied by my scale factor cubed to get my new volume. All right, so now that we've seen that short demonstration to explain proportional change to volume, let's recap. Remember, proportional change is when you're changing all the dimensions of a figure by the same scale factor. There's a couple of ways that we can see proportional change to volume. We can, if we want to, multiply all the dimensions by the same scale factor and then use the new dimensions to find your new volume. Or we can use the quick, easy formula that we just saw work in that demonstration where we take our old volume and multiply it by the scale factor cubed to get our new volume. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. In the first example, it says, what is the new volume of this figure when a scale factor of 2 is applied? Well, the first thing I'll have to do is find the volume of my original figure. So remember, it's a good practice to shade in your base. And I'm going to start with the formula area of the base times height. Since my base is a rectangle, that means I'm doing length times width for the area of the base and then multiplying by the height of the prism. So I've got a length of 2 times a width of 5 and then a height of 8. 6 times 5 means the area of my base is 30 times 8 gives me a volume of 240 inches cubed. Alright, so now I'm going to use my formula for proportional change. Old volume times the scale factor cubed to get my new volume. Okay. So the volume, or the old volume, is 240 times our scale factor of 2 cubed to get our new volume. Remember 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2. So that means that we'll actually be multiplying that old volume 240 
times 8 to get our new volume and that new volume works out to be 1920 inches cubed. Okay. Let's go ahead and take a look at example number two. All right, so we have the same rectangular prism here, and this time we are applying a scale factor of one half. So we just worked out the volume of this figure, so I'm not going to work it out again. It was 240 inches cubed, okay? But we do have to go ahead and apply that different scale factor a scale factor this time of one half. Okay, so our old volume here is 240. Our scale factor here is one half. And since we're talking about volume, we'll have to do scale factor cubed to get that new volume. Okay, remember one half cubed is going to be one half times one half times one half and we can just multiply straight across makes that real easy so that means we're going to be doing 240 times one eighth to get our new volume and remember multiplying by one eighth would be the same as dividing by eight so when we do that division we end up with a new volume of 30 inches cubed if those examples went smooth for you, I want you to go ahead and move on to example number three. If not, make sure that you take some responsibility, rewind if you need to, watch those parts again. We're going to go ahead, pause the video now while you work example number three. All right, so in example three, you're finding the new volume of this cylinder when a scale factor of one third is applied. And it says that you can use pi is three to make this go a little bit quicker for you. Now, I'm not going to go over how to find the volume of this cylinder. You should already know that. If you need to, you can refer back to the volume videos. Uh, but the volume of that cylinder is 216 feet cubed. We're going to multiply by that the scale factor one third cubed which is one-third times one-third times one-third. So it means we're doing that volume 216 times one-ninth, which is the same as dividing by nine, and we get a new volume of 24 feet cubed. Remember, if you need to, rewind, watch again. If not, move on to example number four. You can go ahead and pause the video while you work that example. All right, in example number four, the volume of this triangular prism works out to 80 meters cubed. Okay, hopefully that you caught that this is a triangular prism, so your bases were triangles. And let's go ahead and multiply that by the scale factor one and a half cubed, which is one and a half times one and a half times one and a half, which comes out to 33 and 75 hundredths. And so 80 times 33 and 75 hundredths gives us a new volume of 2,700 meters cubed. Okay. If that example worked out for you, go ahead, pause the video, and work example number five. All right, in our last example here, we've got a square pyramid that we are applying a scale factor of three to get our new volume. Remember, a volume of a pyramid, one-third area of the base times height. So hopefully that worked out for you and you got a volume of 81 inches cubed. And so now we're going to multiply that by our scale factor cubed. Three cubed is 27. And when we multiply that by 81, we get a new volume of 2,187 inches cubed. All right, guys, remember, if anything is a little bit hazy, 
Take responsibility for your learning. Go back, rewatch it, slow it down, pause, do what you need to do to understand the topic. And do not forget to do your summary. We want to know what you learned. In your summary, you should be answering the question, how does proportional change affect volume? And how can this relate to proportional change to area?